austerity that that helped us fight the pandemic. <laughs> That's it. The, uh, he's he he's been my he's on my list of Britain's worst ever PM. For me, <laughs> that that's who I put at the top there, and uh, because, and actually, not just because of Brexit and all the other stuff. I think that he sort of started this whole move into the whole woke culture, where he then then everybody tried to outdo each other. So it became like an arms race of wokeness. And then Theresa May, she tried to, and that's when they were trying to bring in the self ID laws and this whole like be kind thing. And then Labour's got to up it as well. I'm mm. not saying Labour are any good when it came to this stuff, but I feel anyway that's got nothing to do with this. Can I just give a quick counter to that, which is he saw himself as the heir to Blair. Yeah. I agree. Cameron had like the A list. He was obsessed with diversity, but he was only copying what worked for Blair. So it yeah, but is Blair still Labour's did fault. It, no, but Blair did it better and had substance to it. Blair did it better. Yeah, Blair, but fair, but that's uh, uh, <laughs> that's very good. But uh, but yeah, David Cameron um, has been hauled up. Well, that's not. I just added that word myself. I don't know why he hasn't You've been hauled up. Turned into a tabloid. Journalist. He's been hauled up before the COVID <laughs> committee. Uh, no, they asked him some questions, and rather than sort, he's come out fighting, and he said, "No, no, all of that money that we sort of cut, all the NHS, and how we sort of basically uh, emptied out everything and, and took away all our all the money, and uh, that." That's actually led, it, led us in good stead, is the idea. Right. So that's his argument in that because we saved that money back then, then we had all that money to absolutely waste away well, during that's, lockdown. It's bad, isn't it? It's like you're on a diet and you've had a Big Mac and fries, but then you've had a Diet Coke as well, and you're congratulating yourself. So it's like... We, yeah. yeah. It, it's kind of like we didn't pay you for ages, so now our company's doing quite well. Like, <laughs> it's like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a tenuous argument. I have to say it was quite funny. But there was one part that sounded semi-reasonable. He said that... Um, if you lose control of your debt, you lose control of your deficit and you lose control of the economy, you end up cutting the health service, which is what happened in Greece. And I kind of, I sort of see that. And he says that the NHS was ring fence and that that was actually always going up, which is true. The budget was going up for it. And he's saying the austerity was just everything else. But it was going up, but not enough. That was a point for the population growth. Right. So it did go up in real terms, but not enough to meet the needs that were needed. And then, and then also there's the argument about whether we were ready for a pandemic. And because obviously we didn't have the PPE around, which meant that we had to pay like way over the odds. So they had to pay their friends all of that money. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and then and now the it's all in landfills. What's the difference between preparing for flu and for COVID then? Excuse my ignorance. He says, oh, we were prepared for a flu epidemic. Tissues. Yes, that's true. It's yeah. like it about that. Same that's scientific. Um, yeah, it is a bit silly, this one. We'll move on, but it's like David Cameron, like, I was right, the David Cameron story. Let's do